Chris, you are seeing some signs of optimism here, at least in the short term. Sure. I mean, not only optimism, just um, volatility in general, just, you know, coming in a lot. You know, maybe surprising to hear, but the last three days of this week, the S&P has traded in a less than 1% open to close intraday range. That's the first time we've had three straight days since the market peaked um, at the very beginning of 2022. So it's been over a year since we've had this kind of intraday calm. And when things start to calm down in general, um, you know, people get a little bit more optimistic about their stocks. And we were reminded, you know, the Fed has not really been the market's friend for over a year. Um, but when the going got really tough with the banks, um, you know, we were kind of reminded that um, at the end of the day, um, the Fed and its balance sheet is there to protect mm -hmm. the market. So that really, I think, calmed people down. And where else are you fe uh, seeing bullish flow, bullish signs? Well, you know, we're seeing bullish flow in airlines. We're seeing bullish flow in uh, metals and miners. We're seeing bullish flow in China. And, of course, we're seeing bullish flow in mega cap tech. You know, if I can just remember one trade from this week in Amazon, uh, that's been so uh, beaten down. August, uh, big call spread, 120, 140. It hasn't been to 140 in a long time. So uh, we are seeing investors, you know, if you're a little bit concerned about uh, whether this is another head fake or not, and if you're looking at call and call spreads, at least you know what your max gain, max gain or max loss is to those trades. So we're seeing a lot more of that recently. There's Amazon today, just under 102. What about some of these areas if we said, okay, you know, maybe I'm more concerned about what happens in the fall. I'm putting on those kinds of hedges, those kinds of positions. Do you glean any of that happening? Uh, you know, the fall is a very long ways away, you know, when you have an <laughs> options market where uh, most of the trading is happening in, in the first week. I think there's obviously still a fair amount of uncertainty. And, you know, you can look at something like the VIX futures curve. Uh, the spot VIX is, was below 19 earlier today. But if you go all, if you just even go out to this summer, uh, it's closer to $23, $24. So the uncertainty ramps up quickly. So, you know, I would say investors uh, in the very near term feel, you know, relatively uh, comfortable. You know, the bank situation is somewhat under control, uh, but a fall is definitely a long ways away, especially for the options markets. Then I, I guess the final question I would ask you, Chris, is when you read, what you, when you look at what the price action, the other indicators that you mentioned, do you think that the second quarter will look very similar to the first in terms of the market? Um, yeah, no, I think the second quarter is still, um, you know, the, the vo volatility levels there have come in a fair amount. I think that, you know, for some dramatic change, like a couple really aggressive inflation prints or for the economy to really fall off a cliff really quickly, I don't think that's really, you know, being priced in. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of like the U.S. economy is uh, the Titanic, and it's not really going to shift um that dramatically, most likely in a month or two. So no, we're not seeing that. All right, Chris, thanks for your time today.